All right, welcome back. In this part, we're going to go ahead and start performing elementary row operations on this augmented matrix that we developed in the previous video and try to reduce this matrix or try to convert it into a matrix, an equivalent matrix that is in reduced row echelon form. And a good strategy that I like doing is when I'm performing these elementary row operations, I like starting at the very top left element and I like converting each column to try to get it into reduced row echelon form. So for an example, for this first column, I would have a one here and I would try to get this three to go to a zero as well as this two to go to a zero. And then I would go to the second column and I would try to get this element to go to zero, this to one, which it's already to one, and this to zero and then so on and so forth until I get this matrix in reduced row echelon form. So the very first thing I wanna do is I wanna try to get this three to be a zero. So what I can do is I can take row two and I can add to it negative three times row one and that will produce a new row two. So row two is three, one, negative seven and 24 and if I multiply negative three times every element in row one, I get a negative three, negative six, a positive nine and a negative 36 and I can add these two rows together, right? And this will produce a new row two. So negative three plus, or I'm sorry, three plus negative three is zero. And then one and negative six is negative five, negative seven and nine is two, and 24 and negative 36 is negative 12. So this right here becomes our new row two. So I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite this matrix that we have above. Okay, so this is looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down a little bit. Now my second task is to try to get this two to be a zero. So what I can do here is I can take row three and I can add to it negative two times row one and that will produce a new row three, right? Because if I multiply negative two by this positive one, I'll get a negative two here and when I add a negative two and a positive two, I get zero. So let's go ahead and do that. Our Third row is two, seven, negative three, and 27. And negative two times row one is gonna give us, let's see, negative two, negative four, six, and negative 24, right? So we're gonna go ahead and add these two rows together. We'll get zero here. We'll get three, three, and three. Well, that's kind of nice, right? So let's go ahead and rewrite this matrix. And I should be, to stay consistent, be writing these or drawing in these dashed lines just so I can differentiate the coefficients from the right-hand side constants. Now, the next thing I would do is work on this second column here. And I would try to get this two to go to a zero. But the thing is, I see this row of zero, three, three, and three. And whenever you're trying to perform elementary row operations, it's always nice to work with positive ones because you can multiply positive one by any other number to try to reduce other numbers to zero. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take row three and I'm gonna multiply it by a non-zero constant, one third. And this is gonna produce our new row three. So basically, this entire row, if I divide them all by three, I'll get a zero, one, one, and one, just like that. And now what I can do is I can take row one and I can add to it negative two times row three and I can get a new row one. And that's what's really powerful about having rows of ones or just any other element as a positive one. So let me just go ahead and scroll down a little bit. I'm gonna take row one, which is one, two, negative three, and 12. And I'm gonna to add to it negative two times row three. So this is gonna be zero, negative two, negative two, negative two, right? Zero, negative two, negative two, negative two. I'm gonna add these two rows together. I'll get one, zero, negative five, and 10. And I will go ahead and rewrite that augmented matrix. Okay, so we are getting there. And the next element I would probably work on is this negative five. I'll try to get that to a positive one. So what I can do is I can take this entire row and I can divide it by negative five to try to get this to be a positive one. So I can take row two, I can multiply it by a non-zero constant, negative one over five. That will produce a new row two. So I will go ahead and scroll down 
go ahead and do this in another color. Our new matrix is going to be, now what I can do is I can try to get this element to be a zero. So I'm going to scroll down again, and I'm going to take row three, and I'm going to add to it negative one times row two, and that will produce our new row three. So our row three right now is zero, one, one, and one, and then we're going to add to it negative one times this second row. So I'm going to get a zero, a negative one, a positive 2 over 5, and a negative 12 over 5. And this, if we add these two rows together, we're going to get 0, 0, 7 over 5, and negative 7 over 5. So our new augmented matrix would be, okay, we are getting closer, so I'm going to go ahead and scroll down a little bit more. And now what I can do is I can take row 3, and I can actually multiply it by 5 over 7 to try to get this to be a positive 1. And the reason I'm doing that before trying to get this to 0 is that I can already see that this is going to be a positive 1 if I simply multiply this entire row by 5 over 7. So I'm taking row 3 and I'm multiplying it by 5 over 7 to get a new row 3. So our new matrix, so this is looking good. We have 1's along our diagonals and we have zeros appearing above and below these leading one terms, we just have to get these two terms to go to zero, and we should have our matrix in reduced row echelon form. So let's go ahead and scroll down. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get this negative five to go to a zero, and I can do that by taking row one, and I can add to it five, oh boy, that is not a five. So five times row three, and that's gonna produce a new row one. So row one is one, zero, negative five, and 10, and then we have five times row three, which is zero, zero, five, and negative five. So if we add these two together, we get one, zero, zero, five. So that becomes our new row. All right, cool, we're almost there. This is looking pretty good. The last thing I need to do is turn this element into a zero. And I can do that by taking row two, and I can add to it row three, times 2 over 5, and that is going to produce our new row 2. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll down again. Row 2 is 0, 1, negative 2 over 5, 12 over 5, and then 2 over 5 times row 3, which is this row right here, is going to yield 0, 0, 2 over 5, and negative 2 over 5. And if we Go ahead and add these two rows together. We'll get 0, 1, 0, 2. All right, 12 over 5 minus 2 over 5 is 10 over 5, and that is equal to 2. And so let's go ahead and write our augmented matrix. And there we go. We have a matrix, an equivalent matrix, that is in reduced row echelon form. And what's really cool about this is that this column right here is our values for x, y, and z. So that, the 5, the 2, and the negative 1 are our solution set to the original system of linear equations, which was all the way up here. Another way we can rewrite this matrix to kind of visualize that is we can turn this matrix into a system of linear equations. So we can do something like 1 times x. So if you look at just the first row, Remember, this is the x row, this is the y row, and this is the z row. This is our right-hand side constants. We'll get 1x plus 0y plus 0z is equal to 5. And then our second row is 0x plus 1y plus 0z is equal to 2. And finally, our third row, 0x plus 0y plus 1z is equal to negative 1. One, not seven, negative one, right? And you can clearly see here that this equation is going to yield x is equal to five, and you can see that this equation is going to yield y is equal to two, and this equation is going to yield z is equal to negative one. So there you go our solution set to the system of linear equations. So here I just rewrote our system of linear equations that we originally had, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna check 
each of these values x, y, and z to make sure that these equations are satisfied. So for the very first equation, this one right here, we have x, which is 5, plus 2 times y, which is 2, minus 3 times z, which is negative 1. That's equal to 12. So that gives us 5 plus 4 plus 3 is equal to 12. And if we add these numbers together, we do see that 12 is equal to 12. So x is good. So let's check the second equation. We have 3 times x, which is 5, plus y, which is 2, minus 7 times z, which is negative 1. And that should be equal to 24. So we get 15 plus 2 plus 7 is equal to 24. And 15 plus 2 is 17, plus 7 is 24. So that's good. And finally, our third equation here, we get 2 times x, which is 5, plus 7 times y, which is 2, minus 3 times z, which is negative 1. And that should be equal to 27. So we have 10 here, plus 14, plus 3. That should equal 27. Well, 10 plus 14 is 24, plus 3 is 27. So that is awesome.